Ain't a great start, is it, Adrian? Never mind. OK, over you come. All right, that's one out of the way. We'll allow you one more. Just there. Top, middle, or bottom for your first 500. Up the top. Top. You got up the top? top. Yeah. Want to go up the top for the first 500? Be fair. Come on. Oh. oh, I hate this. Come on. <laughs> OK, all right. Well, there's a two gone. You've got to now start getting... It has been done before. You've got to get right the way across, OK? Can't afford a hot spot. The question comes up. You've got to get it right. This time, for your first £500, and hopefully more, top, middle or bottom, where do you want to go? Top. Up the top? They want to go up the top for the first 500 Come on, be fair. Oh, question. OK, get this right, you've got the first £500. All right. Song and dance man Wayne Sleep was once engaged to Princess Diana. Is that true or false? False. £500, you're off. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. All right, for £1,000, top, middle or bottom? For £1,000, top, middle or bottom? Hang on. Middle. In the middle? middle. In the middle for a thousand. Come on, be fair. Ooh. <laughs> Question. Okay. Prem Premier John Major was once an artist model. Is that true or false? false. That's false. That's a thousand pounds. You're on your way. Okay. For one thousand five hundred pounds, top, middle, or bottom? Where do you want to go? For one thousand five hundred. Okay. We're going bottom. Down the bottom. They want to go down the bottom for a fifteen hundred. Come on. Oh. Bad luck. Let's give a nice round of applause. Come in, Natasha. Don't worry. You've done well. You stand inside, Adrian. There you go. Just come in here. Okay. Let's have a look at the screens. Let's see what they all were. Uh... Up there. Yeah. It's all very well after the bit. Never mind. You've done very well indeed. You're taken away with you tonight. An office bureau, a stereo unit, silk pyjamas, uh, a weekend in Edinburgh, a holiday in the Canaries, the money you won earlier, that's 1,150 as well. Is that OK? Yeah, no. And best of luck with your career and look after yourself. And you, Natasha. Thank you. And the best of luck to each and every one of you. Till we'll see you at the same time next week. Good night, God bless. All right, good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Give us a clickety click if you can still hear us. Mecha Bingo Online, sponsors of Challenge. Pets aren't just animals, they're part of our story. Our bedtime guardians, our personal trainers, our travel companions, our work besties, our snuggle buddies, our family. And that's why we exist. With cover to suit your budget, Animal Friends is here so you can create more stories together. Plus, every pet policy comes with an added purpose, helping us donate millions to animal welfare charities worldwide. Animal Friends, because all good stories start with a tail. Get a quote today at animalfriends.co.uk. It's another scorcher in Britain. nice if things were better than you ever imagined. <laughs> Join Sky Mobile and get 99% network coverage. Imagine that. Sky Mobile. Hello, possible. Ferrari drivers dream of home to do it at Monza. What a magnificent win for Ferrari. We know how important it will be for the team, for the championship, for the Tifosi. The passionate Italian motor racing enthusiast who worship Ferrari. It's such a great atmosphere, this race. It really is. Can Ferrari give the Tifosi something to shout about at Monza? To add Sky Sports, go to sky.com slash sports. Buzzcox is back, and we can't contain our excitement. Daisy just sounds like a chicken on every attempt. <laughs> <laughs>
dream has been stolen. A theft of this nature is so extraordinary. He was saying, you can't catch me. You've made us wait long enough. What's your final answer? Mecha Bingo Online, sponsors of Challenge. Thank you very much. Hello, good evening, and welcome to Through the Keyhole, the show that visits the homes of the famous and brings you the inside story. Tonight, as always, we borrowed the keys to two fascinating homes belonging to well known personalities, and with Lloyd Grossman's help, we'll be taking a privileged peep behind closed doors. But the question is, whose? Now, to try and answer that question, we've got a matching three piece suite of panelists to welcome here tonight. <laughs> First of all, a man about whom much has been written, but very little has been read, Mr. Willie Rushton. <laughs> Next, a beautiful writer who's a beautiful writer. She may be a miss, but she don't miss much, Miss Emma Freud. <laughs> and finally, a man who tells me he can get any girl he pleases. It's just that he hasn't pleased any yet, Mr. Chris Town. <laughs> Let me tell you a little bit about the, uh, the game. With the aid of our famous key, we'll be taking a careful look inside the fascinating homes of two people. And that should tell us something, maybe a lot, about the person who lives there. All that our friends over there have got to do is to try and work out who that is. So let's join Lloyd right now at house number one. And watch closely because remember, the clues are there as we go through the keyhole. <laughs> This house must be lived in by quite jolly people because it's rather a friendly house. Like a child's drawing of a house, it's a sort of smiling building, isn't it? Gosh, I see something's fallen off Godzilla's charm bracelet. <laughs> This is a very ritzy little hallway. Not only does it have a gold chandelier, but it's got this wonderful Brazilian marble floor. The sort of floor that Fred Astaire hoofed on in flying down to Rio. So maybe this family tap dance in and out of the house. This living area is open plan and very spacious. This family would seem to be quite well adjusted. They're happy to know what everyone else in the family is doing. Maybe some of them are even busybodies. There are lots of flowers in this room, lots of vases. So if someone here likes gardening and flower arranging, there seems to be a definite connection with Scandinavia because there's quite a lot of Danish porcelain here. Now, as in the hall, there's a love of luxurious materials. Maybe that's why there's a portrait of Marie Antoinette on the wall. But this fireplace is made of really splendid marble. There are lots of horns in this room. There are drinking horns and playing horns. And indeed, it seems as if this family is very musical. They're certainly quite cosmopolitan because there's a very elaborate samovar, ideal for comfort on cold winter's nights. This kitchen and the appliances in it are vast, so cooking and eating must go on on a very large scale in this family. I see there are more souvenirs of Scandinavia here. Hans Christian Andersen's Little Mermaid from Copenhagen. And even the fridge has been built by Vikings. Now, someone in this family is trying to be thrifty, but in spite of their good intentions, they just don't have self-control. 
I think that these people are outrageously cosmopolitan because look, there's another samovar in here. This multinationalism extends to cooking as well. Someone here is very adventurous. The bedroom terrace has a wonderful view of the garden and you can see from here that these people are very indulgent towards their pets. Who else would build a swimming pool for their alligators? <laughs> this bedroom is frightfully romantic. There's frothy pink bed linen a pink lampshade and a little heart-shaped box. So these people are real lovebirds. They also love their clothes because there's a huge wardrobe here, but most of it seems to be devoted to home entertainment. Let's look at the evidence. The ornamental bugle, the Russian tiern, the esoteric spices. Who lives in a house like this? David, it's over to you. Well, thank you very much indeed, Lloyd. And now for our home and studio audience, though not for our panel, here's whose house it is. <laughs> William, would you begin the uh, psychoanalysis? I'd sooner be ravaged by a lorry load of mountain ants. But, um... <laughs> It's, it was a funny sort of house. It's sort of house Patrick Allen used to zoom over in a helicopter. Do you remember those advertisements? It probably stands on some vast estate full of roughly similar dwellings. Well, I've, flower arranging and horny I've got down here, but I think that's right. <laughs> Busy bodies, he said, which may be a clue to something. And it's Brazilian marble, but he didn't know what marble the fireplace was. What does he know about Brazilian marbles? Oh, Lloyd, who has lost his years ago. Um, I came to the conclusion... <laughs> curry powder, and they're Scandinavians. So they're sort of Norwegians you stand downwind of, if you've got any... <laughs> <laughs> upwind. He said, I want upwind to be even better. But I think that's what they're suffering from. And they don't have any self-control, he said. They're very interesting people. I think I'd probably like to meet them, but I have no idea who they are. <laughs> Herbert, 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 Herbert. Well, you're going, to have the, you're going to have the pleasure of meeting this mystery person in a moment. It's the husband of the household we're looking for. Oh, right. Emma. Scandinavian. Lloyd doesn't give that much away for nothing, does he? So, blonde is what I thought he was trying to get at. <coughs> well, so... actually, I will help you there by saying, in fact, we're looking for the male of the species, and, in fact, the Scandinavian clues are really to do with this gentleman's wife. It's oh. Chris Tarrant. Oh, <laughs> well, um, yes, that'll be a surprise. Yeah. <laughs> um, there was a horseshoe, I very astutely noticed, which Lloyd didn't actually comment on, but I saw that horseshoe and those bugle horns. I thought maybe there was a riding connection. Nope, not a riding no, connection. No, not a sound. <laughs> um, not a titter. Keep um, fishing. The only, the only other uh, adjective I should use is posy, because, heck, that was one posy hall, wasn't it? With that chandelier and all that stuff. A, a posy, non-riding, non-blonde, non-musical person. Oh. <laughs> non-musical, non-answer. <laughs> Chris. It was sort of friendly, though, wasn't it? So it was sort of cosy but posy. Um, <laughs> so the bloke is married to a blonde Swedish nymphomaniac who likes horns everywhere. And... <laughs> Live in this big bed. <laughs> is he a, oh, he's a musician? Have we got that far? This is a musician. Well done. Well done, Chris. And she's a Danish curry-eating glutton. Um, <laughs> not many of them around, are there? Uh, oh, oh. It's, the, it's the musician you're looking for, and you've done well. Have and, I? And, that, <laughs> I don't and on that note of music, who Past better than William Rushton? Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was the curry. That was the curry, about that. <laughs> <Sorry about that. laughs> it would be fair to say that I know of no pop singers Married to Scandinavian ladies. It would be fair. Except Mr. Abba. No. Now, he, now they're all I've, Scandinavian. I've helped you with the Scandinavian that it's to do with this gentleman's wife. There was another she lives clue in, in Scandinavia. There. there was another clue in there. In What's where? In that piece by Mr. Lloyd Gross. The busybodies. No. He struck that very hard, or perhaps he was running out of breath. Oh, the samovars. Busybodies. Was that a big clue? The samovars. Clever girl. This Samovar. is somebody with a great penchant for Chekhov. No. Uh, some of us. Russian. It's a Russian composer. No. no, no but... David, mouth the words. I'll no, 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 no. I've, I've 
I've it's given not... all I can give at this moment. Christopher. Well, he's not old thingy with the egg box down the Samovar. front of his trousers. Sam of Rudolf Oller. Um, <laughs> not a Russian composer. Does See, he have a know. song which involves samovars in it? Getting close. Yeah. A song. Samovars and the living is yes. easy. <laughs> Gershwin. <laughs> yes. Donny Osmond. I don't know. I give... told the Hamini. No. Um... You're getting very close. Are we? It's someone who sings about samovars. Russian music. Hey, 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 oh, Topol! Hey, 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 hey. Topol! Thing from, from Fiddle on the Roof? No, no. that's Israel. Damn. Um, it's one of them, it's over there somewhere, near France, turn left. It's, it's moonlight in Moscow, midnight in Moscow, so it means it's... Kenny, Kenny Ball! Ball. They were so close, but you beat them there. Well, thank you very much. I, I, I thought I would be with the Scandinavian bit. Obviously, my wife's... Uh, she's, actually, she's half Danish. So uh, we have such a lot of Danish things in our, our home. And, uh, and uh, funny enough, she's, she's, uh, she sort of speaks sort of Cockney, as she's sort of uh, been, been sort of my wife for a few years now. And, and uh, she sort of says, uh, will you go down the frog and toad and get me some uh, snouts? Sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> So she's, she's, she's a marvellous She's person. truly international. Absolutely international, yes. Um, and what about the Indian spices? Are they her or you? Oh, uh, that's me, as you can see. Uh, <laughs> I, I love curry. So when I come home at night, you know, after a gig, I, I sort of get to the curries, curry sauces and that sort of thing. And that's, that's my particular pension. I love uh, curry sauces. And the Midnight in Moscow, that was why the reason for the samovars? That's really, yes. Uh, when we were in Russia, we were presented with uh, quite a few samovars on each of our concerts. So people would come around and give us a samovar or... <coughs> Um, give us the old Russian bugle or something like that, you know, and that's why we collected those things. How many times have you been to Moscow? Uh, you did the first British jazz tour there? No, right? we didn't do the first British jazz tour there. We did the first tour of Russia. We went uh, down to the Ukraine and up to uh, Minsk and then up to Leningrad. And we had a wonderful time. So we're going back there again about you know, um, sometime in, in 88, with a bit of luck. Oh, well, bon voyage. In the meantime, I want to present you with this particular memento. Don't want to keep you away from your curry, but I'd like, before you go, to uh, present you with the Through the Keyhole Key. Thank you and Thank very much. you both for sharing this time with us and your home with us. It's been a delight, Kenny, thank to you. have you with us. Our thanks to thank Kenny much, Ball. Man. Who will we be back with? We'll find out in a moment. Oh, 22. You'll be good at this one. <laughs> Want to buy your next car your way? At Carstore, you can search thousands of cars online. Or pay us a visit. Chat to an advisor face-to-face. -face, or talk to us online or by phone. You can buy online or in person. Then simply drive it away. Or let us deliver it to your door. Welcome to car buying that revolves around you. Welcome to Carstore. What's wrong with the car? It's OK, lads. I'm with the AA. Ah, Bombay mix. Because the AA has more expert patrols across the country, you'll be back on the road in no time. No wonder more people choose the AA. Join today. When was the last time that you stopped to think if the makeup shades you're wearing truly suit the woman you are today? Is it time? to rethink your routine. Choosing the perfect makeup is not just about your skin tone, but it's a combination of your skin, hair, and eye color. That's what makes you uniquely you. That's why I created our Match To Me technology at Trini London. It's foolproof. 15 seconds later, Match To Me has found the colors that suit you the best. Find your match at trinilondon.com. Hi. Hi, Stuart. Just a sec. OK. Impressed by your security, looks very high-tech. It is. We got it from Simply Safe. So we chose a range of sensors that work for us alongside the HD cameras. We feel really safe now. Must have set you back a bit. It was surprisingly affordable and really easy to install. It's definitely the smart choice to protect your home and family. Systems start from under £200 when you buy a professional monitoring plan. There's no safe like Simply Safe. 
Burnley's a small town, and there's only 90,000 people that live here. We are in a relegation battle. I don't think these Americans understand Burnley. And with that, Burnley are relegated from the Premier League. This is a big ask for Vincent Company. The detail he goes into is unbelievable. Come on, go again! He demands so much from us. And we go, we beat them. It's absolutely beautiful! And we beat whatever comes after as well. When you're down and people say you're not good enough, trust that we will finish on top. Listen to the turf more roar! Sky Arts brings you an unmissable celebration of the incredible David Hockney. When I'm in the studio, I feel 30. Number 13. That's unlucky. Welcome back. Welcome back to Through the Keyhole with Lloyd Grossman, who, like charity, begins at home. Somebody else's home. So let's join him straight away at house number two as we go through the keyhole. This little estate is so picturesque, it could be a figment of the British Tourist Authority's imagination. <laughs> this is nicely faded in the best English country house tradition, but the folks we're looking for live upstairs. Even though there's a fearfully grand dome in this upstairs hallway, these people aren't particularly interested in architecture or design. They seem to belong to the shambolic school of interior decoration. But then why not throw your old curtains over the banister? This must be a very exhausting family to be with because they can't stop doing things. If they're not scuba diving or playing tennis or playing badminton, they relax by playing board games. They even play some games that no one's given a name to yet. <laughs> what comes out most strongly in this room, though, is that this is a family of animal lovers. There's a charming picture of a lion teaching a zebra to dance the rumba on the wall. <laughs> and even more than loving animals, they love bits of animals. Indeed, this room looks a bit like a spare parts depot for Noah's Ark. There are animal parts all over the place. These people like collecting. There are lots of sets of things, sets of spoons, sets of cups, even sets of elephants. There's a tremendous array of booze here. So I think they're very gregarious people. And this could be non-stop partying time. This headboard is very impressive. It's almost grander than the house is. I see that these people might be jet setters. Maybe that explains why there are three digital clocks here. They can't afford to miss a plane. These cowboy boots might mean that we have someone here who's a bit of a Marlboro man, a kind of rugged dude. I don't quite know how that fits in with the crossbow, unless it's a person who yodels whilst rounding up the cattle. <laughs> this room, once again, is dedicated to animals. There's a hippo on the bed. And it's easy to see from these snapshots who the favorite member of the family is. The entry to the kitchen is guarded by a frightfully upper crust dormouse. I don't think these people go in very much for gourmet cooking. There's a weird jumble of appliances, some of them out of the Stone Age and some of them ultra-modern. But they're all aimed at producing fast snack food. I think these people are so busy, they rush in here, grab something to eat, and rush out again. So lunches and dinners aren't, I don't think, a big family occasion. They're certainly far too busy to get involved with DIY. They also seem to have a sneaking admiration for foxes. There are foxes in the hunting field, foxes in the dining room, and even foxes on the mugs. This is an extremely practical bathroom and quite luxurious as well. All that you have to do is climb out of the tub, throw yourself into the tumble dryer, and then roll into bed all warm and fluffy. 
There's a definite down under flavor in this room. There's a lounge lizard of a kangaroo and some rather degenerate looking koala bears. Let's look at the evidence. The sporting lingerie, the top drawer doorstop, the antipodean animals in anthropomorphic attitudes. Who lives in a house like this? David, it's over to you. Well, thank you very much indeed, Lloyd. And now for our home and studio audience, here's Who's House. It is. <laughs> a lot of consultation going on there among the members of the team. Christopher. I was very puzzled by this because a lot of... A lot of clues that threw me in completely at the beginning. There were things like a lot of black silk lacy ladies' underwear. Um, so I thought that maybe it was Margaret Thatcher. And then there was lots and lots of drink, and I thought, yes, it is Margaret Thatcher. And then we went wandering off on this tangent of Brisbane and flags of Australia and kangaroos' heads and a lot of sporting stuff. It's obviously someone who travels constantly or, or, I don't know, they're running away from the forces of law and order or something. But there's somebody who can't stay at home for more than about ten minutes. They're... Very sporty and presumably Australian. Right. Very, very sporty. Uh, that was the applause. Um, in fact, we're looking for the lady of the household here. And in fact, her husband's Australian. So, over to you, Emma. Ah, I thought perhaps it was her who was... I thought it was going along the Pamela Stevenson sort of line, but it was obviously... her underwear, was it? Just... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's, like it's not Pamela Stevenson's underwear. No. So he's Australian and she's not. Ish, and she's sporty. She's a sporty sort of a person. <laughs> the, thing, the thing that I like very much about the house is that, is that it was so scruffy. And normally the houses you show on here are so clean and so smart. And you never sort of see the loo paper, which seems to be in the kitchen in that place quite often. Mm. But it was nice to see that it was all scruffy. So I guess... Oh, yes, and the digital clocks. Is that someone who has to get up very early for their job? I thought perhaps that was a... No, no, not that sort of thing. Um... <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Do Willie. I can't think. Willie. I, I was very confused about where they lived. As, as an old thing went in and said, oh, they live upstairs. They vanished upstairs. <laughs> so yeah. I imagine they were staff. I thought, they were clearly. <laughs> no. And it became clear then, there are a gang of ruthless Australian criminals who <laughs> pose as a butler and his wife, and all that stuff around, the whips, the knickers, the drinkers, it's stuff they've nicked from great homes <laughs> in England. <laughs> 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 it's the kitchen a good is a theory. museum. It's a good theory, but it just won't So Leslie wash. Patterson's wife, I don't know. <laughs> Whether she... Possibly no, they, they live upstairs. Other members of the family live downstairs. I see. Doesn't help at all. Down under, I suppose. No, uh, but, but your theory is still a very attractive one. <laughs> Thank you. Well, uh, all right. And, uh, we're looking got... for a sporting Australian woman. Oh, you've said thousands no, of no, them. No, no, no. No. The husband is Australian. Oh, the sporting. husband's Australian. And, and, they're, and they're both well known, are they? Presumably, from she's well known as a sporting girl, and yeah, and he's an Australian man who's well known as well for being an Australian well, man. Well, right. she's more well known. She's better known than him. So he pays most of the bills. Um, she a writer. She... <laughs> Famous lady writer. She, she must be quite young, because I suppose it's the parents that live downstairs. So she's still young enough to live at home, so she's quite young. And the horses live downstairs. Is it Lucinda Pryor? <laughs> now, Lucinda Green, you're right. Oh, Lucinda <laughs> Green, formerly Lucinda Pryor Palmer, coming through the keyhole. <laughs> Lovely to see you. Come and sit down. Who is well, that cunning person? <laughs> it, they, they, they gradually got there through the sporting and so on. The thing that was really difficult for them, and indeed for us, is that we didn't find many horses or pictures of horses in the house. No. There's, there, we don't live with them in the house because we live them with, with them everywhere else. Right. But we thought the lacy knickers would lead you a merry dance. The they really genuinely are there, too. They sing a little tune if you press them when the saints go marching away. <laughs> <Do> they... <laughs> Do they, really? they weren't put up specially. They just live there. They live there. Yes. Are they linked to the whip or not? Um, I think my husband, that's an Australian stock whip. 
And I think when the knickers went up, he rather fancied that the stock would probably look better hung there than behind the door, so that's where it went I to see. live. Well, it looks <laughs> a very attractive piece of modern sculpture. I must say. <laughs> that's how it's best put. Uh, do you have horses as... I think your parents or something live downstairs rather than the horses, but how many horses do you have outside? Yeah, right, they're nearly in the house. There's a, a roughly about 18 to 20 horses outside, which if you were very clever at the beginning as you walked up the drive, you just see a couple in the background. <laughs> but that, but, but, but not pictures inside because you've got the pictures of the dogs and the other animals. Yeah, they, we you... try to keep them out of our home life because, mm -hmm. as I say, we're with them 20 hours a day. There's a phenomenal amount of alcohol in your house. Yes, wasn't it amazing? You know the reason? Why? Because neither of us not. drink. Oh, really? So it just stores up more and more and more and more. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So we neither of us drink. So you get more and more presents at Christmas or whatever. Exactly. Or win a bottle of champagne every now and again, and in it goes. We wait for somebody to come along who'd like to drink it. And are you both into scuba, or is that Yes, it? Yeah, yeah. We both love it. Lots of, lots of active things there we saw at the beginning, lots of action and stuff. Yes, the suitcases, so they're constantly there, and I'm never unpacked, waiting to go to the next place. Yes, the Beverly Hills <laughs> Hotel and all the, and all the well, travel. Well, these, yes, these rather sort of smart. Um, things you picked up. We actually live in the horse box most of the time that we're <laughs> travelling, but every now and again we get lucky, you get taken out to lunch. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and what was the biggest thrill of all your of all your riding? I mean, despite the silver medal in the Olympics, presumably it was the World Championship in '82, was it? Or? Do you know? I think it was earlier, earlier, earlier. It was when I was pra Palmer. Yes, I'm sorry about that. That's all right. No, it was <laughs> quite all right. <laughs> and it was winning badminton in 1973 when I was 19. When in those days you never won anything, and that sort of special win of something big only ever happened to other people. And then, just like that, suddenly it happened to me, and I think that has to remain the most special moment ever, probably. Well, this is not quite a winning on the same scale, but we would love to present you with the Through the Keyhole Key, Lucinda. It's been a delight oh, to have you with us today. Thank you very much It really much has indeed. been a tremendous joy. Thank you very much. for. I shall add that to the knickers. Pardon? I shall add that to the knickers. <laughs> Please put it with the knickers, just above the knickers to the right of the whip, alongside the scuba <laughs> right. kit. Exactly. Thank well, you. our thanks, of course, to Lucinda. Our thanks to our distinguished panel. My goodness me, our thanks to Willie Rushton. <laughs> to Emma Freud. To Chris Farron, to Lucinda, of course, and to our guest in part one, Kenny Ball, as well. Until the next time, goodbye for now. said cup of tea. That's the top answer. Mecca Bingo Online. Sponsors of Challenge. Link's Epic Fresh Body Wash. <laughs> Smell and feel irresistibly fresh. <laughs> you can't play here yet. Come on. We rise by lifting each other. Kenko, made to uplift. Yep, bye. Bye, bye, bye. bye. <sighs> right. Excuse me. Oh, you're getting your tea. Hey, hope you saved a few quid on that lot with co op member prices. Loads of tasty stuff cheaper just for being a co op member. Come on. It'd be daft not to. Even a proper.